Hello and welcome back to UMETSAT for the fourth and final of our weekly roundup videos. Today we're coming to you from one of my favourite places which is the UMETSAT library. Let's turn now and have a look at some of the questions you've been asking in the discussion forums. So this is a first question from Nora who was asking where are the libraries or the records for the in-situ data? We've posted a couple of links in the end of week discussion forum. These in situ data, you will have seen from the videos the role they play in helping us to calibrate the satellite data. The whole of science is built in using data, so when somebody comes up with a new data set, they'll publish it. In that article, they'll say what was measured, what wasn't measured, when does it start, when does it finish, what are the pitfalls of using the data if there are any, what are the errors, which is incredibly important for characterizing the data. And the whole of science is quite a, a public process, so we say, publicly, this is what we claim, this is what our data measured, so that it can be challenged. It's a, it's a fun thing to be involved in. And there are some people who have spent their entire careers just working on making sure that data are properly characterised, and their contribution to science is fundamental. This was a question from Gert and Edouard who were asking which spacecraft do we use to get the signal from the animals with the animal sensor out to the data centre. So one of the spacecrafts that is used is UMETSAT's METOP, which has the Argos uh, transmitter on it, which receives the data, sends it back down to us, and then we send it out to the data centers. This is a question from Stuart, who is asking, do we model or take into account the carbon fixation in the phytoplankton models? Yes, those models are just reaching maturity now. That feedback process, the relationship between phytoplankton and carbon, needs to be taken to, into account in the global climate models, so the models of the whole Earth ocean system that we use for climate monitoring and climate prediction. To get those models right requires a long time series of data, and the data sets are just coming into maturity now as well. So we now have 20 years of satellite data. The in situ measurement is even longer, but for specific places in the ocean environment. So the data helps us mature the models, and those models help contribute to the uh, global climate prediction, which is it's really crucial for understanding the whole system. So this was a question from Christopher, who was asking, does the speed of the boat affect the height of the continuous um, plankton recorder, the tow-along instrument? Yes, it does. So the, the instrument will move between 10 metres and 5 metres high during its journey. These instruments have been running since the 1930s, so we've had plenty of time to understand and calibrate and characterise the instruments. They're fantastic things, and they've made an amazing contribution to our understanding of the ocean environment. That brings us to the end of the weekly roundup, and this is actually the last of the weekly roundup videos we'll be doing. During the course of last week, we looked at how we're able to monitor tiny, tiny organisms from space, which I still find utterly amazing. This week, we're going to be looking more at how we take the science and the data and turn it into decisions so that we can understand more about how we are affecting and changing the ocean environments and some of the decisions we need to make to change how we're doing that. You will as well seen from the weekly email that UMETSAT's just launched a Minecraft competition. So we're offering you the chance to come and build your own marine monitoring spacecraft in Minecraft. Come along and play. These things are incredibly good fun. I hope you've enjoyed the course up till now and thoroughly enjoy this final week that we're coming into. It's been a real privilege to accompany you along this journey, learning about the ocean environment and how we're able to monitor it from space.